Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at A Feast for Odin. This video will assume you know how to play and will focus more on general strategy. First off, I think it's helpful to give an analysis of the action board to find out which actions are the most valuable. I try to give a point value to each component in the game based on either the number of points they are worth or through inference. We can start off with silver, since each is worth one point. Similarly, green and blue goods are each worth one point per space since they can be placed on the home board to cover negative points. Orange and red goods are worth half a point per space based on the shed layout. Additionally, we can see that wood, stone, and ore are worth one point each based on the sheds and ore placed on the home board. Looking at the action board, I think it is fair to assume that an action is worth two points. Based on the first column, we infer that upgrades and drawing an occupation are also worth one point, while playing an occupation is worth two points. Because an upgrade is worth one point, red good squares are worth half a point per square plus one point overall. Blue goods will also be given an extra point on top of their total size. Sheep and cattle cannot fit in sheds and therefore have their own point system. Gaining a weapon is also worth one point based on resources obtained from failed hunts and the mountain action that gives weapons. Given the value of actions, the three and four action columns are nice because you can obtain and play occupations, which may give additional bonuses or points. Because the fourth column lets you play an occupation, essentially you are playing three Vikings to do whatever the action is and one Viking to play the occupation. Always try to play an occupation with a fourth column action. Sheds are useful because they are the only way to gain points with your orange and red goods. The initial cost of creating the sheds can be offset by covering up the negative spaces. Based on the values given to the boats, it is initially more profitable to create long boats rather than NARS. If we look at the hunting actions, all of the actions with dice have the potential to be highly profitable. If you fail a hunting action, you will receive a wood and a weapon, which is a net neutral action. We can also see that whaling with the fourth column is still profitable, so it might be worth it to try the fourth column whaling if someone has already done the third column. If you play an occupation with the fourth column whaling and fail, the action will still be net neutral. By numbers alone, the most efficient livestock action is the two action, three silver for a cow and milk. The fourth column livestock action is the most efficient way to get both a sheep and cow. Although initially negative, long-term breeding and upgrading will make livestock very profitable. For instance, a cow is worth three points as is, but after an upgrade will be worth 12 points. Consider also that having sheep or cows allows you access to milk or wool produce spaces which have high net gain that doesn't require dice rolls. Crafting is a good way to get green or blue goods to populate your home board in the early game. Mountain and trading spaces are in general net neutral actions. Note that the second column mountain action may not be very efficient at lower player counts, but is the only way to get ore on turn one if you want to craft a special item. Note that the rules say that you can trade silver for boats at any time. I tend to like trading silver for boats rather than building them, since you can probably find a good use for your actions elsewhere. Just consider that you need silver to emigrate or purchase livestock. Pillaging and the like are extremely useful because you directly receive blue goods and can upgrade your longboat for more favorable dice rolls. A failed raiding action is also a cheap way to get a stone if you don't have any available from the mountains. Emigrations are potentially a source of a lot of points. You get 13 points minus the amount of silver needed to emigrate, so a few early emigrations will net you a good amount of points, plus the food goods that are saved every round. In round one, I find the most success in getting at least a 2x2 two two on the home board to get the two income for the first round, as well as set up for round two. If possible, I will also try to get the mead bonus since this will take care of any red goods needed for the feast in the early game. In the second round, most strategies start to diverge depending on starting occupation, available actions, and personal preferences. 
You can use your first round actions to do a few things. My favorite opening is the two income and mead bonus on the home board. This is done by first converting flax to linen, then upgrading your starting mead and getting a piece of wood. Craft a chest, then get mead and silver. It is also possible to immigrate on turn one at the cost of delayed income. Get two wood and build a gnar. Then get a silver and immigrate. If you want a quick island, you can use a different opening that will give you three income on the first turn. Get a wood and upgrade your mead. Craft a chest and get the two mead and two silver. Trade the three silver for a whaling boat and explore one of the islands. Place the chest on the home board and the whale oil on the island. You could also try hunting or snares, which will give enough goods to get the mead bonus, but I'm presenting openings that do not require dice. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.